Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. This is going to cover troubleshooting at layer one and layer two of the OSI stack. First thing, our copper and fiber cables are liable to break if not handled correctly. So just please treat cables correctly, like don't bundle them up and wrap them up together because you're liable to break them if you do that. You'll see it happening quite a lot in the real world. Some common layer one problems include the interface is administratively shut down. On switches, interfaces are up by default, but administrators can manually shut them down. It's actually best practice to shut down unused interfaces to stop users from plugging devices in there. On routers, interfaces are shut down by default. So if you configure an interface on a router, remember to do the no shutdown command. Next one, if the cable is disconnected on one or on both ends, then obviously you're not gonna have any traffic going through there. Also, if the device on the other end of the cable is powered off, then you're not gonna have any traffic going through there either. Other things, broken connectors can cause loose connections. This happens quite commonly as well, like on a, an ethernet cable, the RJ45 connector with the clip on the end, it's quite easy for that to get broken off. And then there isn't anything to retain it in the interface it's plugged into, and it's easy for it to get a loose connection that way. Also bent or stretched cables, can break the internal wires or fibers. And lastly, EMI, electromagnetic interference sources such as motors or microwaves can cause errors in transmission. That is not such a big problem if you've got newer cable, like CAT7 has got much better shielding than CAT3 cable does. Our troubleshooting command at layer one. Useful command is show IP interface brief. When you do that, it will show you the status of the interface. If it shows administratively down, that means you haven't entered the no shutdown command. So do that to bring the interface up. If it shows down down, that means that the administrator has done a no shutdown on the interface, but there's a layer one issue. So check that it is cabled in at both ends and the device on the other side is powered on. If the device on the other side is powered off or if you don't have a cable securely connected on both sides, the interface will show as down, down. The last setting you can have there for the status in a show IP interface brief is up, down. That typically indicates a layer two issue or a speed mismatch. So in this case, check the interface configuration is the same on both sides of the link. A common issue would be if you've got different VLAN settings on both sides of the link. We'll talk about that more later when we get to the VLAN section. So there is an example output of show IP interface brief. You can see that fast ethernet zero slash one is up up. So that is all good. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 is administratively down. So you need to do a no shutdown on the interface to bring it up. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 is down down, indicating most likely a layer 1 problem. Check that it's cabled on both sides and powered on the other side. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 is up down, which most likely is a configuration mismatch between this device and the device on the other side for those interfaces. So go on both interfaces, do or both devices, do a show run and check the configuration on both interfaces either side, check that there's not a mismatch there. Next command is show interface. 
If the interface is reporting an excessive amount of errors, it could be either a layer one or a layer two problem. Check the integrity of the cable. Check there's no problems with the cable. Again, check your administrative configuration matches on both sides of the link. So here's an example of a show interface command. If you do just show interface and hit enter, you'll get a really long output because it'll show you the command for every single interface in the router or switch. So usually we'll do a show interface and then specify the interface like we've done here for fast ethernet zero slash two. Here we can see that it's set to full duplex and the speed is 100 megabits per second. We've got no input errors and no output errors. So that's a good sign. I showed you the full duplex and the speed on here because that's going to come in on the next slide now. Yeah. Possible error you can have is speed and or duplex mismatches on your interfaces. If you've got incorrect speed settings, that can cause the interface to operate below its maximum speed. For example, if one side is set to auto and the other side is set manual, or if both sides are set to auto and it doesn't ma manage to negotiate correctly, that can cause an incorrect speed setting where it's going to run below the optimal speed. If you've got a speed mismatch where you've manually configured the speed on both sides of the link, that will typically bring the interface down. If you've got a duplex mismatch, then the interface will typically stay up, but you'll get terrible performance because you'll have loads of collisions on the interface. If you do a show interface command, that will typically report a really high number of errors in that case, which would give you a clue to what the problem is. Okay, so as we said in the earlier lecture, both sides of a link must be set the same for the speed and duplex, either set both sides to auto or manually configure both sides. Now, you don't need to do that for all parts. So for example, in one switch, maybe part one is set manually and the device on the other side has to be set manually. Maybe part two is set auto, the device on the other side of that link should also be set to auto your Cisco devices will default to auto. If one side is set to auto and the other is manually configured, it will often result in a mismatch. So always set them both the same. Best practice is to manually configure ports attached to other network infrastructure devices or servers. So your routers, your switches, your firewalls, etc., have those configured manually, also your servers. For your normal PCs, we're going to have a lot of those, we'll typically leave that set to auto. Again, remember, if you do configure it manually, do both sides of the link. If a device has issues with auto-negotiating speed or duplex, then manually configuring both sides will normally solve that problem. If you do have a duplex mismatch, then CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, should detect that and it will log it like you see in the example here. We've got a duplex mismatch discovered on fast ethernet 0 slash 0, not half duplex. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.